You know, I have been always wondering what's the best time for us to complete the square. Do you guys have the answer for that? If not, let's take a look. Well, right now it's 320. That's the answer. Alright, anyway, of course, this is about solving quadratic equations, especially when the quadratic equation is not factorable. And we also know that besides the completing a square method, there's also the quadratic formula. But I will tell you, this is unfortunately not so popular. But I think this is so not fair. So that's why I'm making this video. I will tell you the best time to complete the square rather than the quadratic formula. Alright, so here's the deal. When we have a quadratic equation, in the standard form, let's say, we have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Of course, we can just use the quadratic formula, and if you take some time to remember it, we know x will be equal to, thanks to the quadratic formula, and I have a proof of that. Check out the video after this video, okay? But anyway, the quadratic formula says we have negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, and then all over 2a. And you can definitely be a quadratic formula of x per, be my guest, no problem. But as I said, check this out. Complete square will beat the quadratic formula in the following case. Ready? Here's the first thing. If we have the a is equal to 1, sometimes if you can easily make the a equal to 1, then go ahead, do it. Next, take a look at the b value. If b is even, and it can be positive or negative, doesn't matter. But if we have a is equal to 1 and b is even, then I will tell you, use the completing a square, which is CTS. I promise you this right here will beat the quadratic formula. And what happens to C? Well, don't worry too much. It depends on the C value sometimes. It can make it factorable or not. But of course, let's focus on the example. That's not factorable. So here we go. Suppose we have a is equal to 1 already. That means we have x squared. And then let's say b is mm, 10. And by the way, again, b can be positive or negative, but here I just use positive 10. And let's say c, let's say it's negative 5, because I want to make this not factorable. And of course, let's put this equal to 0. Complete the square will beat the quadratic formula for this question. Check this out. But how do we complete a square? Well, this is the first step. We need to have x squared plus bx on one side. So we have to move the negative 5 to the other side by adding the 5. And we will just get x squared plus 10x. And we will just get positive 5, right? 0 plus 5. So that's what we have. And notice, I left a space here because we need to do the magic number. What's the magic number, you say? Well, the formula is the following, that's the second step. We are going to add, let me put it down, 1 half times b squared. You have to just work that out somewhere on the side. That's the magic number. But don't make it like a secret, though. You have to show your work so that people know <laughs> what your secret is. But anyway, just do it. So you can get like the, the work credits and all that. All right, so in this case, what do we do? We have 1 half. B is 10, so we multiply by 10. So remember this little formula. And square that, half of 10 is 5. It's like, you have $10, I have no money. So you give me $5 and we can be even, you know. But anyway, half of 10 is 5. Then you do 5 square, and this will give you 25. And this is the magic number that you have to add on both sides. Add it on both sides. That's a very common mistake. Add it on both sides. What does the magic number do? I will promise you, I will guarantee you, that will make the left-hand side factorable. And the best part is, when you factor it, it will be a perfect square. Check it out. If you factor it, you get x plus 5 times x plus 5. You do get, parentheses, x plus 5 square. And work this out on the side. 5 plus 25 is 30. Look. What's so good about this? Well, we can then just take the square root on both sides. And don't forget the plus or minus on the right-hand side. So, and then you can cancel that out, and that's what we have. So you see, what we really have is x plus 5 equals 
plus or minus square root of 30. But what's square root of 30? Can we simplify it? It's not this, it's we cannot. So if we cannot simplify it, that means we don't have to. So we just keep it as how it is. So on the left-hand side, we have x plus 5 is equal to the right-hand side, which is this. We can just minus the 5 on both sides, and we see this is just going to be x equals negative 5, and then you just combine that with plus or minus square root of 30. And you can just leave the answer like that. And that's the answer. That's it. How wonderful is that? Okay, so you see, one, two, three, maybe four, four lines, right? And that's how you complete the square. And now let's take a look. What if we use the quadratic formula with that example, right? So if we do that, same example, x squared plus 10x minus 5 is equal to 0. The C only helps for the quadratic formula. In our case, we know that a is 1, b is 10, and c is equal to negative 5. Let's just go ahead and plug into the formula. We know x is equal to negative b, which is 10, and then we do the plus or minus square root. Aha, we do see the plus or minus square root, huh? It's very similar, huh? b is 10, square that. So we have 10 square, and then minus 4 times a times c. a is 1 c is negative 5, put it here, put it here, just to set it up. And then divide everybody by 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. Cool. Now it looks like this is so much better than all the steps I demonstrated earlier. Uh, I agree and also disagree. I agree is because yes, if you have the formula already, then you can set it up. Seems much easier, yes. But I disagree is because it will take you some effort to remember the quadratic formula if this is the first time or like mm, you're not so familiar with this then yeah definitely um, take some time to remember it and then you will be an expert for that so yeah same thing can be said with that of course but anyway here's the thing you see this number instead of the square root is actually much bigger than that so that's the downside for this part but let's try it we're not going to give us so this is negative 10 we have the plus or minus here we have the square root okay we still have to do the computation let's do it here 10 square minus 4 times 1 times negative 5 10 square is 10 times 10 which is 100 4 times 1 is 4 times 5 is 20 so that's how I like to do it so we have 20 but negative times positive times negative so it's just negative times negative is plus so altogether we get 120. So that's the number inside. And then divide it by 2. Cool. Hey, this answer does not look like that. What's wrong? Yeah, unfortunately, for the square root of 120, we actually have to break it down. How? Think about two numbers. They multiply to 120. And one of them has to be a perfect square. Don't use one, of course. That's not break it down. So the combination for that is 4 times 30. So let me just break this down for you. This is the same as square root of 4 times square root of 30. All right, so check this out. Here we have negative 10, and then we have the plus or minus. Notice square root of 4, it's the same as just a regular 2. That's why we break it down this way. That's why I didn't use 6 times 20, it didn't help. Right? 6 is not perfect square, 20 is not perfect square, but 4 is, so that's why we choose square root of 4 times square root of 30. That's 2, and then we have the square root of 30. And then, divide it by 2, I can write it as divide this by 2, divide this by 2. Cool, this 2 and that 2 cancel, negative 10 divided by 2, we get negative 5, and then we have the plus or minus square root of 30. Aha, the same answer over there. But I will say this did take us a little bit longer, didn't it? So what do you guys think? When's the best time to complete a square when a is 1 and b is even? Why b is even? The reason for that is because, you see, the magic, form, the magic number formula, 1 half times b. If b is even, then you can keep the inside a whole number so you don't have to deal with fraction. So that's why we want b to be even. See? doesn't matter. 
And it also works if you have imaginary students, uh, but maybe that will be for later on. All right, so let's check what time is it. Hey, it's still 3.20. Why is that? Because as I told you, this is the best time to complete the square. Check out my other videos if you need more help. That's it.